this is the horoscope of the daughter of uh, one of our relatives they recently stayed with us for a few days enjoying our hospitality on the last day of their stay they requested my time for a quick reading of her horoscope and by quick reading they meant this that is what they meant by quick reading they wanted me to look at her character sketch likes dislikes her relationship with her elder or younger brothers and sisters and also her relationship with her parent father and mother then the usual stuff the education marriage career and her and her so this is a actually a lot of work this is like a life reading and i'm sure that uh, you might be getting into similar request from your friends and relatives for the so called a quick reading and uh, where they expect all these things uh, uh, from you and and when you are hard pressed for time like the way i was on the day of their uh, departure so at that time i realized that if you have a, a, a an application or a software that gives you a, a very good layout about everything that you need to assess a horoscope and then if you have a checklist that is ready with you then you can make a quick assessment and that too quite effectively because sometimes it is uh, very difficult to say no to our relatives or even to keep them uh, pending for a few days so it doesn't look nice and the jyotish layout this one particular layout that helped me very much on that day and see this is like your um, uh, you know just like a artist has a canvas where they can see their painting uh similarly you know the jyotish portal uh, layout is going to help you it is your um, I, i would say it is your your canvas and where you can uh, see everything at a glance and you have a list of uh, you have all the uh, the 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 horoscope that you need the cusp and the lagna chart all the planet signification and uh, many of you who might be making use of the sub sub lord or the cuspal sub lord so all this information is there plus the the uh, the mahadasha so so this information becomes very handy for you to make a a quick assessment of a chart we are going to add uh, some more elements to what i call this as a worksheet view or we can call it a kp canvas view and uh, so the the new additions will only help you have a have a at a glance view of the entire thing that you need uh, at your disposal and we are not going to overwhelm you with a lot of data the idea is that you should be uh, devoting more time in what on the predictive side of the kp rather than scrolling back and forth or scrolling up and down and looking for the relevant information now this is i have i have uh, i'm not going to disclose the birth data uh, for privacy reason and but you can see that this uh, she is born on july 2013 so she is still young but the parents are always curious uh, about all for the house reading so 
let me first uh, look at the the character sketch uh, i've already created some videos on how to do a character sketch so i'm going to repeat the same thing over here now the the standard approach in kp is to look at the the cusper of lord of the ascendant now this thing i haven't seen this uh, giving very good results when this comes to the character sketch so all you have to do is just um, look at the lagna chart and look at what the ascendant is that's a leo in this case and also look at where the moon is the moon is all in the aries so you can see that the the fire element the that governs the ascendant and that also governs the uh, the moon rashi so and you should be knowing about uh, the the likes dislikes or the traits that are related to the fire element so that will help you put some notes about the basic character sketch uh, of this person and but that's just one part of the character sketch when you make use of the ascendant and the and the moon rashi the next thing is you have to look at the uh, the element if uh, this chart has some kind of uh, inclination towards one particular element so if you look at uh, the planets they are many of these majority of these planets are occupying the the air sign the jupiter sun mercury is in uh, gemini and saturn and rahu uh, are in uh, the libra so five planets are already in the air element so so there is definitely a tilt toward the air element so apart from the fire that the horoscope has from the ascendant and the moon there is a, a good dose of the air element as well that that that, that makes a person entertain that's what the air sign is all about and the fire sign makes a person ambitious so the chart is going to be a, a of a person who will develop into an intelligent ambitious and pushy woman in the future and so and then lastly you have to also look at what houses are represented by the ascendant lord so we see the sun sun is indicating the the third house and the 11th house and the 10th house so it also puts focus on the on these houses and you can make it out that these houses have something to do with the career and profession so now you can draw a picture that uh, this person will be intelligent this person will be pushy and this person will uh, be very focused on her career uh, in her life and so these kind of notes you should have some tips and bits so that you can accumulate them together and present it as a part of the character sketch this is this will not fail you in most of the chart the approach that i have just discussed with you will work uh, well for you so that's the the character sketch thing and also when uh, you are uh, uh, when when you start uh, reading the chart it is a good idea to look at uh, the ascendant degree and make sure it's not right on the uh, cusp of the two signs like zero degree or one degree you know so that gives you some uh, peace of mind that this horoscope is uh, is right not on on the threshold of two uh, different uh, signs and then quickly also have a look at uh, the the planets and see that none of these planets are in 29 degree plus or zero degree and the idea is that um, you should be sure that the if there is some uh, some uh, discrepancy in the recorded time of birth then the the planet might move into the other sign or the ascendant might change so this particular uh, layout will help you 
quickly analyze or quickly make a decision that this horoscope is 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 correct and even otherwise now this is a, a recently born person so nowadays parents are very particular about keeping a exact time of birth now let's uh, look at some other aspect of her life and the next question is obviously about the 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 elder brother the younger brother sisters and what kind of relationship uh, this person might have with uh, her brothers or sisters so and, and this is one of the questions that i have seen that comes uh, most of the time from uh, from our relatives and a uh, lot of time we tend to ignore this question but when i was doing uh, her chart and at that time i realized that this question needs some more focus because as a parent the parents are very keen to know that uh, the there's going to be good relationship amongst uh, brothers and sisters and uh, and also with the with the parents so now the the kp rule for the uh, the having good relationship with the younger brother or sister and the uh, the elder one is uh, let me write you know the rule for you so for the younger Shri KSK has mentioned that the when the significator of the first and the third, you know why first and third. First indicates the person, and the third house indicates the younger born. And sixth and eighth house, sixth and eighth house are the inmical houses. So when you have this combination, then this the person becomes inimical or the relationship between the with the younger bonds is not good and when the when it is 1 3 and 11 then they are friends then the relationship with the younger bonds are uh, are harmonious and the same thing you can apply with the 11th house where with that shows the and uh, the elder person now suppose if both the things are there you have uh, uh, the 11th house and then you also have 6 and, and the 8th house in that case, uh, both things are going to happen. A person uh, might have good relationship, and uh, depending on the dasha, uh, the the relationship uh, might go on the rocks, and there might be some bad failures as well. Now, one of the things about um, this uh, combination is that the first house. You see, the first house has to be there. So. Uh, the and if suppose the first house is missing or this kind of a combination is missing then it means it's going to be a normal kind of a relationship uh, with uh, with the co with the elder than the younger than same same rule you can extend and apply for the parents as well instead of the third you can take into account the fourth and for the father you can take into account the the ninth now one of the issues that you will run is the when the when a person has multiple uh, uh, brothers and sisters then the third house indicates the immediate younger and then the fifth house uh, younger younger so and then the seventh house uh, still you know so it becomes a little complicated and uh, and on top of it the third house also indicates the neighbors so if a person um, has this kind of a combination let's say one three six eight then it not only indicates the inimical relationship with the younger bond but it also indicates that uh, the most of the time the person might uh, be living in a neighborhood where he or she might not have good terms with the neighbors and uh, the, and the same with the 11th house because the 11th house apart from the elders it also indicates the uh, the friends so whatever is applicable to the for the elders uh, it becomes applicable for the uh, friends as well 
my idea of uh, discussing this was that that this particular aspect of life that how this person's relationship is going to be with the brothers and sisters and if you look around you will find stories within your own uh, uh, relatives or in your family where you see that uh, uh, the uh, the relationship with uh, between two uh, brothers and sisters might be good but uh, might not be good with the another one there could be some kind of a dispute so this is a very important aspect of life and i think uh, uh, we need to look uh, more into uh, the these kind of a charts where uh, where some kind of a partition has happened in the in the home or there is some uh, dispute disharmony amongst brothers and sisters this is one area that worth looking for because this this question is a very uh, 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 popular question uh, and that is what i realized uh, that day now in this chart if you look in this chart then you find that the the first house is indicated by the or the signification of the first house is indicated by venus and then i think it is the sun right and no other planet indicates the the first house and if you look at this combination for the venus and also for the sun then you see that 11 is there you don't see any bad combination so you know that this person will have a good relationship with her younger or the or the elders so that's uh, that that that's the that's about the relationship with uh, brothers and sisters let's move on to the uh, the education part now the education for the leo ascendant if you look at the fourth house and the ninth house they both are ruled by uh, the sun uh, sorry the mars so by default the mars becomes the Significator of these two houses, which are deemed to be very good in Krishnamurti uh, Padati for the higher education. But just by virtue of being the ruler of the fourth and the ninth house is not sufficient. There has to be some additional stuff that will certify or make Mars eligible or any other planet that is uh, in the star of Mars eligible. To give good education. Now, if you look at the this particular table, you see that uh, the Mars is untenanted. And this is one of the very important uh, thing in Krishnamurti Padjati, and I did a video on this. Never ignore the untenanted planet in Krishnamurti Padjati. They play a very specific role, and they take on a very strong signification as well. So, Mars, which was just a ruler of the fourth and the ninth curve by virtue of being untenanted has become a very strong significator of the fourth and the ninth house. Very strong. I would say it's a first plus kind of a significator for the fourth and the ninth house. So what it indicates? It indicates that this person will definitely have a very good uh, education and because it is mars and mars is also in the star of mars so you can make it out that this person is going to have a technical uh, education and that that to a higher education and on top of it you see the the mars is in the 10th plus so it seems like the whatever she is going to study is going to be her career as well that what this this uh, combination indicate now another th another thing about is the finding the uh, the kind of education one might have the arts or the science or the commerce and even when we talk about the technical is she going to be in the medical or she is going to be an engineer so these are some of the questions that um, uh, that you have to face and uh, uh, and then uh, and have some of your checklists or notes ready and so when i looked at uh, when i was looking at the chart then i saw that the mars uh, 
the sublord is Saturn that also indicate the sixth house which usually indicate the medicine or the medical side but I was not sure about it so then I thought that let me do some more investigation I, I was already hard pressed for time but uh, what KSK has sent, said is that you have to find out the Dasha at the time of the first uh, uh, job so how do you find out you take the significator of the second house which in this case is uh, mercury and you see the mercury is untenanted mercury is very strong it is the it is the only significator of the second house mercury is very strong and then you take the sixth house and sixth is the saturn so you would find venus over there and then you take the significator of the tenth house so in tenth house you have mars and jupiter uh, both but i am just going to focus on the mars because mars is stronger than the jupiter mars is uh, untenanted and it, it is in its own strategy so uh, so the uh, the uh, the mars is very strong and on top of it if you look at uh, the jupiter then mercury is deposited in the jupiter's star so mercury becomes more powerful than jupiter so it is mercury venus and mars so this is the combination that indicates the uh, the first job that she will get during this dasha antar and Pitanta. that is what she should be getting and then you have to look at what kind of um, uh, career opportunities or the nature of career this combination can produce so mercury venus and mars this is where uh, you will have to refer to the uh, one of the books uh, by Krishnamurti, whether it is uh, the third reader or i guess the transit where this the the result for these combination is given third reader it is given so uh, the mars and mercury and uh, sorry the, the mercury venus and mars now this combination will appear in uh, i think aries and then this combination is going to appear in uh, in, uh, in the taurus as well and and then maybe in gemini the idea is to look at the star uh, star lord the sorry the sign star lord and sub lord where mercury venus and mars this combination takes place and if you if you look in this particular book by Sri Krishnamurti, third reader then you will you can identify those uh, zones uh, or the areas that are jointly ruled by mercury venus and mars so i flip through the pages and I saw that uh, uh, that the the engineering or the engineer uh, thing was mentioned, but I could not see any reference to any medical thing. So I told them the I told the parent that uh, she is definitely going to be in the technical uh, education side. She will have higher education, but it seemed to me that she will be more like a consulting engineer rather than being in the medical side. But we need some more uh, um, uh, uh, research or some more data on being able to identify the, the, the career or the education of a person with some more procedure. And because this is also one of the questions that parents will have about their, about their kids. So that was for the education. I, higher education engineer and consulting engineer why i said consulting was that i could see that there, there is a lot of uh, influence of the third house and the tenth house you can see in this table there's a lot of influence of the th third house and the tenth house this usually makes a person become very good at uh, uh, at at consulting job one that is able to express uh, himself or herself that's what the third house uh, indicates and so based on all these inferences uh, i made an analysis and so and they did ask me about the business side 
so i ruled out the business side and the only reason was that uh, see the business side is uh, ruled by the seventh round you have to look at the seventh round so if you look at the at the saturn that is that rules the cusp of the seventh house then you see the saturn is uh, uh, in the star of Rahu and again Saturn is in the sub of Saturn. So this is not a good combination for being in business. Saturn will not make a person confident about doing a business. You have to have Mars or you have to have Mercury. Mercury is the planet of um, commerce and uh, business, trading, those kind of a thing. So that is required for uh, a person to be successful in business or at least have uh, more information towards the business rather than the service. Saturn is not good for business. So based on this, uh, I said that uh, if, uh, that she will be in service. See, if you look at Saturn, see it indicates the seventh house and because it is the ruler of the seventh house and it indicates the tenth house also that indicates the career and again at the sub level also but the saturn itself is not conductive for the business that's uh, one of the kp uh, rule and uh, so that we have to follow so that was about the um, the career business and the service and and what she is going to do now let's come to the marriage the marriage part in this horoscope needs some attention and one of the things that uh, i wanted to point out was there is one rule kp rule about the marriage and that's it then the rule is that if the the neptune is on the cusp of the seventh house that means the degree of the neptune is on the right on the cusp of the seventh house then then it creates some situation in the in the married life or something that's related to marriage now here you see the neptune is 11 degree and if you look at the seventh cusp, so it is also 11 degree so there's a what is called as a rap conjunction right there the neptune is right on the cusp of the seventh house this is not good at all this this particular uh, uh, yoga i would say is not about uh, divorce or those kind of a thing this indicates some kind of a deception some unusual thing that's going to happen uh, at the time of marriage and that's why in the title of this video i deliberately mentioned uh, the deception in marriage uh, so you might want to make a note of this uh, rule you that you will not fine but Sri Krishnamurti in that book the marriage married life has mentioned about one particular incident and uh, thus uh, uh, focusing on the this particular you caused by the Neptune the when the Neptune is right on the cusp of the seventh house then some unusual thing happens at, at the time of marriage it's not about the the relationship or the divorce or not the usual kind of bad thing but something unusual happens some deception happens at the time of marriage so 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 i gave her parent this kind of a hint that the there is some bad yoga pertaining to marriage and there is another uh, another uh, observation from Shri Krishnamurti that also you might want to make a note of so we already talk about Neptune on 7th plus and this this rule you might want to make a note this also appears in uh, the marriage married life uh, the book by Sri Krishnamurti and the uh, what this rule basically says is that uh, uh, if a planet is the significator of uh, 
the marriage giving house is like 2711 but at the same time it is only the sole significator of the sixth house then it it will not allow the marriage to happen and if you look in this chart then you find this yoga emerging look at the venus see the venus is indicating the uh, the marriage related houses and after the Ketu Dasha, then she is going to be in the under the sway of the Venus Dasha. So that at the fag end of the Venus Dasha is the time for the uh, for the matrimonial prospect. But look at why how Venus is going to deny the the thing, and that's because of this particular rule that the KSK has mentioned that Venus is the only significator the only one strong single significator of the sixth house if you look at the at the uh, star lot column you will only see the venus and venus is the only one strong significator of the sixth house and venus at the same time is also indicating the uh, the marriage giving house so but the mirage but uh, venus is not going to bring forth the marriage so this is one another one rule that you might want to make a note of uh, and so the venus dasha the marriage is not going to happen and then neptune on the seventh cup deception now the question comes that should come to your mind is there two questions that should come to your mind that if suppose the neptune is uh, not on the seventh cup let's say it is on the first cup the ascendant itself then what happens then will that person go through some deception nothing to do with marriage but this is a logical thing that you should be asking now there are some very good uh, observations from Sri Krishnamurti on the role of role of the uh, Neptune so but I'm going to uh, uh, create a separate video because it uh, is it is going to be a little longer but that will explain some observation that I'm going to share with you about the role of the Neptune. Now, after the Venus Dasha, this person is going to go through the Sun Dasha. So, Sun is okay for the, it indi indicates the third and the eleventh. It also indicates the eleventh house. So, that's also, this all indicates uh, uh, a, a good period where matrimonial prospect can happen. But uh, the, uh, there is another rule that let me quote from Sri Krishna himself and from the same book and this is you know for this uh, particular uh, quote from PSK is for some other horoscope not for this particular horoscope where while analyzing that horoscope Sri KSK has mentioned about the role of uh, the the earth sign especially the sixth and the tenth the sixth and the tenth house are good for business but they are bad for marriage so what he is saying is that these houses which can which can give a good career or a professional life to a person are eventually harmful for the matrimonial prospect that is what this particular rule uh, here is trying to elaborate and you must make a note of it any horoscope where you find that the emphasis is too much on the on the earth related uh, house this is basically the sixth house and the tenth house and even the first house because the first house makes a person ambitious about self publicity or self recognition but first house being 12th to the second house is not good for the kutum life or the or for the marriage and same is for the 6th and 10th so I, any horoscope that has a lot of uh, inclination toward the career oriented house is not a good house for the marriage especially the matrimonial uh, compatibility or the uh, relationship that is what it, uh, it, it says marriage might happen but it will be a very uh, 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 and a, a very kind of a dull married life and so that is what this indicates so you can make a note of this also now let's move on to the of the 
uh, health. So I I did a video on the health disease where I had shared the KP rules for the the health and disease. So basically, you have to look at uh, the bad houses are six, eight, and twelve, and the first house has to be there, and then the the for the recovery or the good health, the eleventh house, ninth house, fifth house, these are good houses. So if you now the Venus dasha, she will go through the Venus dasha. Venus does indicate the the first house and it also indicates the sixth house over here. You can see that the Venus is uh, in the star of the pattern that is the ruler of the sixth house. So then you can identify other periods within the uh, Venus Dasha. But since the Mahadasha Lord is strongly connected with the 11th house, so nothing to worry about. Then again after that you have Sun. And Sun is also strongly connected with the first house. So all the Antar Dasha or Pratintar Dasha that have a strong connection with the 8th or the 12th house or the 6th house, are the period that you can identify and let them know that these are the period when somebody will have health related issue. Moon is bad because if you look at moon, so moon is the significator of 8 and 12. But more important than this is that moon is untenanted. So when a planet becomes untenanted, it becomes exceptionally strong to give the result of these houses the 8 and 12 which are uh, bad houses so the moon period is uh, is bad otherwise uh, this horoscope is not bad from the health point of view uh, minor health issues might be there and until the moon dasha so this is how we i was able to uh, give them quote unquote a quick reading uh, about uh, the various important aspects of the of our life and so we are working on some more options and you will see that we'll be adding some more options to the to our portal and right now i think we have the only kp resources so my friend and my colleague jayesh is working on it and soon you will have a section with the KP resources and we'll keep on adding some more options on our portal and thank you for all the emails and suggestions that we have gotten through the contact us page or through the direct email and I'm going to create a video where we will discuss uh, some of the suggestions and comments that uh, we have received from you guys thanks for watching